Stealthburner, the new beta upcoming update to the Afterburner. Um, and while I see this helm somehow important, so we get a new cooling, actually we have a lot of cooling systems which work fine with warrants. Uh, Laudo, ABBN and 5015 mod. Therefore, I think that the most important thing about the stall burner is not the cooling part itself, but the clockwork to extruder, which gets completely redone and well reimagined. So today, let's take a look on the clockwork two, assemble it, and uh, see how it's made. First of all, if you're installing Clockwork 2 on a Voron, uh, you will have to print another type of carriage, unfortunately. Because um, when original carriage has two holes here, I mean here and here, Clockwork carriage has a place for heated inserts on top. And while, of course, you can uh, force a heated insert in the hole of the screw, which is present in the original uh, Warren carriage, I do not advise you to do so, because, well, it's just two pieces of plastic. You can print them and redo them anytime. The second difference is the extruder itself. As you see, it now consists of uh, two uh, lightweight parts, which don't even resemble the heavy plastic chunks uh, like from Clockwork 1. They fit together with these two uh, printed edges, like clipped to each other. And the main drive gear comes in here. So, as you see, this is a very tight build, uh, which will, of course, uh, contribute to the rigidity and stability. <coughs> which of course will contribute to the rigidity and stability of the extruder. Um, all the smaller parts are also redone. So first of all, the lever, uh, the two gear lever now consists of two parts and instead of just pushing the two gear in, you just clip it in. I said clip. And some smaller parts also have some new features. So first of all, the ledge goes here, and if we push something into the filament hole, we'll be able to see how tight this actually is, because as you see, the, there is a very small distance between the filament and the gears. It's much more compact there than the original clockwork. So, uh, the ledge, or a smaller part of the ledge, has been also redone. It has a small ridge here, which just slides in. So, it reduces the uh, movement, so the part just don't fall off, it doesn't wiggle. And you can also slide it in and fix there. So, you have a ledge, you have a toothed gear level, lever, and you have a big ledge here, which is using for fixing and unfixing the mechanism, just like in Clockwork 1. And it all gets pressed together with the top part. Of course, we are looking at 10 to stepper motors. I've got one from Fisec, 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 Fis, whatever. These guys, nice guys, very recommended. And they, uh, the motor goes on top of the back plate, somewhere here. So if you look at the design, it just barely touches the plastic. It just almost presses this part of the build. So again, this is very tight. This is very little backslash build. And uh, well, I really like the new design. So let's start the assembly by putting all the threaded inserts and four inserts will go into the new carriage. Here we go and the rest of the assembly is similar to standard Warren's assembly. I will not cover it here. The front part of the clockwork tool will require two threaded inserts. So two are here on the bottom. 
three more come on into the second part, namely here, here, and here. Two more inserts come on the back side of the back plate, here and here, and one goes to the side. So as a result we have two threaded inserts in this part, uh, two on the back of this part, three on the front of this part, and one on the side. We should now assemble the gears. This is a main drive gear and the main um, threaded gear which is which has this grub nut. So first of all let's remove the grub nut. Let's put a tiny bit of Loctite on it. And let's install it on the shaft. Nice and tight. Let's assemble the idler and if you like me get a BMG kit you should pick the shortest shaft that you have. This one because it fits the lever just perfectly. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use a tiny bit of lubricant okay that wasn't a tiny bit Put the tooth gear inside the lever. We'll close the lever and then I will push the shaft through. Again, removing a little bit of excess grease. Let's install these two little bearings which will hold the drive shaft in the position. One goes here. And another will be tricky one to install because there is no space for fingers. No, no, it just fits in place nice. So let's install the main gear here. And let's put the cover on top. Here it is. Let's have two 25 millimeter screws. One goes here, supposedly, and one goes in this hole. And let's fix both parts together. Double check that there is no binding and it's just solid so it's not over tightened. It is not as far as I see. Now let's install the motor. Uh, you'll need one 30mm screw which, which goes in here and fixes the upper part of the motor. Here it goes. Again there is no point of over tightening something. It, the tension should be enough to fix it in place. And there is one 8 mm screw here, which is a little bit trickier to put in. Let me secure it and then let me show it to you. So yeah, it goes in here between the yeah, between the two parts of the extruder. So it is here. Okay. I suppose we should now regulate the tension. 
and tension is adjusted by just moving the motor back and forth and as Manuel says we just have to adjust it so there is a tiny to no backslash which is in my case approximately 70% all the way down so I'm just sliding it down I'm not pushing it it clicks just right and then I tighten the screw for reference this is as far as my screw goes next let's install two more threaded inserts and one is located I believe here and one is located on a small part of the ledge let's use one 60 millimeter screws to secure two parts of the lever together again let's see that it's not binding and everything still rotates and let's install the adjustment screw uh, manual says that you should decide whether you're using the washer or not i'm planning to use it i mean this one pla this plastic washer uh because i find that usually you're having a lot of small issues if you're trying to install it without it uh, the spring is always bending the rod the screw is misaligned and so on and so forth so this is the assemble latch mechanism so let's push the latch in here it is and we need one 25 millimeter screw to secure it the screw goes here and you can see the latch through the hole so let's carefully tighten this one again this is an extruder so we don't have to over tighten anything uh, just see if it's not binding but holding things together okay top cover and I love how Warren's team moved from having heavy uh, well solid parts to these lightweight shells top cover should be installed using one 16 millimeter screw which just drops through this big hole here so see me dropping it uh, not dropping okay it's not as pretty <laughs> as I hoped it to be so nevertheless one 16 millimeter screw here and one eight millimeter screw on the side okay so this starts looking as afterburner and if you put these two pieces together this really looks like a solid build Finally, we need to install the latch and the last 25 millimeter screw. So let's just push it into the build and use the last hole, this hole, to put into the 25 millimeter screw. I find it easier to assemble it with latch in fully open position. So I'm opening it tightening it and then I putting it all together with a nice click so this is clockwork too the last thing that we need to install is a cable belt cable chain mount so this is this thingy with two holes because I have non-fancy cable chains 
and it has one screw in and one place for a threaded insert so it goes like here and the chain lies on the uh, mount just horizontally so i will need to put two threaded inserts here and one threaded inserts here let's do it three threaded inserts later let's put together uh, let's put on the chain guide or chain mount you will need a 20 millimeter m3 screw here on the top part and 8 millimeter screw on the other side here So here it is, the clockwork tool the way it meant to be. And honestly, I find it easier to assemble than the clockwork one, because despite of the tighter design, it's much better engineered and much more lightweight and robust. Let's see the performance. However, on Discord, people say that the performance is amazing. And yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.